Look, Ed Gillespie is on the line right now. Ed Gillespie uh, has just been nominated to run for the Senate against Mark Warner in the Commonwealth of Virginia. First of all, congratulations on that nomination, Ed. Well, thanks so much, Brian. I appreciate that. It was a great honor, and I am looking forward to carrying our fight to Mark Warner and talking about the issues that matter very much to the voters of Virginia. All right, so I'll paraphrase what you said uh, after you got the nomination. You said, look, we may have all come in, in through different doors, but we're going to leave united in our, in our desire to win this election. Uh, you, you had to convince a lot of people that, that you were worthy of their vote. You went around the, the state and you talked to people. Do you feel like you now have the complete and unfettered support of the Republican Party in, in, in uh, Virginia? I do. We had a great convention in Roanoke, and... Uh, people who weren't for me in the nominating process were clearly for me at the end of the day. And I had vowed that no matter what happened, I would support our nominee. And, and all of the other candidates did as well. There was a move, uh, a very gracious move to nominate by acclamation when it was clear uh, that I had a strong majority amongst the delegates. And uh, I'll share one anecdote. Uh, there was one woman I was talking to uh, pretty high up in the in the uh, uh, hall there. And I was trying to get her to vote for me uh, as a delegate, and she said, well, I don't think I'm going to vote for you for a delegate, but I'll be for you if you're a nominee. And I said, well, I appreciate that. We've all got to come together. And I was, as I was leaving uh, the convention center in Roanoke, I saw her walking to her car with an Ed Gillespie yard sign under uh, one arm and a handful of bumper stickers in the other hand. <laughs> and I thought that was... So she was good to her go. word then, yeah. right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Ed Gillespie, you said on Saturday in your speech that you're going to take the fight to Mark Warner. Well, guess what? Mark Warner's already taking the fight to you. I, you know, we look at the websites this, uh, in the morning before we start the show, and all over the Washington Post, I'm seeing these ads. They're already hammering you, the Virginia Democrats. They're calling you Pocket Ed because you were a million-dollar lobbyist. And Am I wrong, or is this the same party that just put Terry McAuliffe in Richmond, and they're they're attacking you for being a lobbyist? Well, look, they are not going to want to talk about the issues that matter to the voters of Virginia, and I'm not. I'm going to respect the voters of Virginia, and uh, you know the, the Democrats clearly are concerned that they're going to know Mark Warner's record, which is that he has voted to increase our taxes by nearly a trillion dollars. He has voted for seven trillion dollars in debt. He supports a carbon tax and cap-and-trade legislation. He uh, didn't just vote for the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare. He whipped for it. He helped to get it passed after, after telling us that he would never support a bill that would mean losing our insurance if we wanted to keep it. He was voting yeah. for it because it was going to bring down our health care costs. So I'm going to talk about my positive agenda for economic growth. I'm on an economic growth tour now. Uh, we were in Abingdon, and uh, we're in Charlottesville today, and it was in Danville uh, last evening, and we're going to take this message of economic growth to uh, the voters of Virginia. That's what they want to know is what are you right. for, what do your policies do? You mentioned the carbon tax. Uh, this is going to be, I think, a bigger issue. Explain why this is important to the voters in Virginia. Well, first of all, we're uh, a coal state. I mean, and, and you look at uh, the southwest uh, uh, part of our commonwealth, and uh, there are a lot of coal jobs there, but there are fewer and fewer every day as a result of this administration's policies. And uh, carbon tax, cap and trade legislation kills jobs, uh, and and uh, in, a, in a big way, it also raises prices uh, for consumers. And you know we're paying too much in gas already and electric bills. In fact, you know the price of a gallon of gas has doubled since Mark Warner took office, and that puts a real squeeze on people. And so, you know, they say, well, this is going to have, you know, we're going to do this because it'll uh, it'll stop global warming. Uh, the impact is negligible at best, and in fact, what you end up doing is pushing coal production overseas to places like China, India, Indonesia, where they they are uh, less stringent in terms of their clean air standards. And I think it's going to result in uh, in more pollution at the end of the day as a result, of, as well as these. Uh, the devastating impact it'll have on jobs yeah. and Ed, uh, costs. Ed Gillespie's our guest. He's the brand new Republican nominee for Senate in the Commonwealth of Virginia. And Ed Gillespie, we have a crisis on the border of the United States of America. They're planning on uh, about 80,000 miners just streaming across the border seeking humanitarian aid. This is all because of the president's unilateral decision. By miners, we mean young people. Yes, yes. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, we were just talking about coal mining. I should be clear. Yeah, these are all kids that are under the age of 18. But it's because the president just unilaterally decided we're not going to deport these kids anymore and now look what happens 
Uh, if you were senator right now, what would you do to solve this problem on the border? Well, we've got to secure our borders, and we have not only a right but a responsibility as a nation to do that. And uh, I believe that what we would do to secure our borders would not only allow us to, you know, prevent people from coming into our country that we don't want coming in, it would allow us to allow people in that we do want coming in. We could have a rational immigration system. You know, my father came here as an immigrant from Ireland as a boy to Ellis Island. And the things that we do to secure our borders would also enable us to, to have a, a rational system. And we need to reform our visa system. Forty percent of people who are here in this country illegally are here by virtue of having overstayed their visas. Right. Uh, you know, if this but, were a private sector problem, it would be fixed by now. But these, kid, uh, but these kids who are here now, what well, do we yeah, do with them? What do we do with them? Well, I, you said there were 40,000, did you say 80,000? It's, it's 40, across 40, the, 40, uh, across 40, our southern border. Yeah, 47,000 are already here, and they're seeking right. amnesty. And they're, they're anticipating another up to, up to 80,000 this year, and they think that might double next year if we don't do something. Right. And, that, and that's, I, was, I, I was just finding your question about people streaming across our border, and I think we need to secure our borders. Now, as for those who are here now, I have said I don't believe in citizenship for those who are here uh, by virtue of having broken our, our laws. Uh, and so that's that's my position. I, I think that uh, you know we we should look at renewed, possibly renewed visas uh, for these folks because I don't believe we'll end up in mass deportation of 10 to 12 million people uh, who are here in the country by most estimates so lately. And uh, if they were to go through a process whereby they uh, criminal background check and assimilation, self sufficiency, uh, any back taxes, uh, I think that we could. Uh, if we reformed our visa system and secured our borders, could have a, uh, a new round of visas for people who are who have come here by virtue of breaking our laws, but not citizenship. All right, so we got a president right now who legislates uh, through neglect sometimes. He says, look, we're not going to enforce our immigration laws. Uh, he, we got a president who says, look, I can't get the, the EPA regulations that I want, the laws that I want, so I'm going to legislate through executive order. Should Congress do anything about that? Should you know, elected officials stand up and say, no more? Well, yes. I mean, I, I think that this is a clear abuse of executive authority. And one of the things that uh, I think would be an important consequence of the uh, Virginia Senate election and winning here would mean getting control of the uh, U.S. Senate by Republicans for the last two years of the Obama presidency, which would be a check and balance on President Obama instead of a blank check for President Obama, which is what we have now in our senator who votes with President Obama 97 percent of the time. 97% of the time, there's no accountability, no check and balance at all being provided, and uh, the executive branch clearly needs that right now. And winning in Virginia would mean that not only would Mark Warner become the former senator from Virginia, but Harry Reid will become the former Senate majority leader. And we would have an opportunity to have greater oversight and uh, accountability. And I think also, you know, uh, enact no such funds amendments for things like this big EPA rule, which is right. going to be kill a lot of jobs uh you could pass from the house and the senate and at a minimum get to the president's desk right now uh the president is shielded from uh the you know his actions by harry Reid and the, and the uh democratic majority in the senate well, well, we're gonna have to leave it right there ed but uh, listen thank you so much for joining us uh, don't be a stranger i won't be thanks for having me on great to be with you and we're back on the trail uh right and early this morning all right congratulations on the nomination